Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Things are heating up. We're seeing a lot of stuff going on in the world, and I want to bring some of that to you so you can see where we're at. Um, so many things right now are right in front of us, and it's kind of surreal. We have been waiting for these things so long that now that they're happening, we're kind of like, is that it? Is that it? Because we've been watching and trying to figure this out for so long. I have some pictures I'd like to go through and see what we got going on. Let's see here. Start here. This keeps happening to me still. I don't know what it means aside from what I've seen people say on uh, other channels that this means destruction that this means uh, it's time to start watching because it's about to go down. And then I just happened to notice lately that just numbers that, sh you know, shouldn't appear. Like at this time of day, I, I shouldn't even see this number because I'm at work. So it just happened to pull my phone out, which I don't, you know, I rarely do at work and this number's on there. So I took a screenshot. That happened again. All right. So let's get into the pictures of what we discovered during the last, since the last video. And here we have in Luke 24, 41. And that's the point of watching right here is that while we watch, we get more and more familiar with the Bible and learn new passages and um, get into these passages and see the deeper meanings. Uh, we compare scripture with scripture and we're trying to... Uh, Draw closer to our Lord, our Creator. The Word became flesh, and the flesh dwelt among us. The Bible is the Word of God, and it's this, this is what we need for salvation, is the Bible. And it says, and while they yet believed not for joy, they wondered. That's almost like us right now. <clears throat> we're seeing what's going on, but we, we're kind of afraid to jump up and down joyous because we know now that we're almost there like this is right around the corner and it's kind of surreal we're just kind of held back kind of wonder should we jump up and down none of us have heard amos 3 7 yet where god said i will directly tell each one of you i will not withhold that i'll tell each one of you when this is and so ultimately i believe that god is going to tell us in his own way to each one of us exactly when the day is going to occur i don't think he's going to do it too much um, further away from when the day of the rapture will occur, just for the simple fact that um, I think that, you know, we have to continue on. He needs you to go to work. He needs the guard that is a Christian to go to the prison where he works and mention all of these things to the prisoners. He needs the prisoners who are in there. There are people in prison right now that are very much Christian, and they have become saved uh, while in jail, and uh, they're watching and waiting. Uh, Jesus will commute their sentence. They'll wind up in heaven. There's a lot of... Uh, people stuck in situations uh, that are about to be relieved of those situations. So um, as we watch, we continue. And, and here somebody made a comment, which it was no big deal. Uh, they said that uh, in heaven we won't be eating meat. We will be eating uh, just plants. And I would argue that God could put a steak in front of you without killing a cow. He can put whatever he wants right in front of you. Just like when God, if you think God went out and killed a whole bunch of animals, put them on a blanket and lowered them down to the rooftop. So, and I'm going to forget which uh, which person that was it, David. Um, it, I don't recall exactly who it was, but uh, he lowered all these forms of meat down to him. He didn't kill those animals. He just made them. And that's the same thing that's going to happen in heaven. We're not going to be killing animals in heaven, but we will eat a steak. I know that. Jesus ate when he can, he was in his resurrected body, and what he does here is shows them that even though he is resurrected, he is not the same as he was before. It wasn't just like Jesus, remember, gives up his immortality for mortality. Now that he is risen, he is immortal again. What does he do? 
have ye here any meat? He didn't ask for a flower or an orange. He asked for meat. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat before them. So just remember that. Keep it. We don't need to be... Um, we don't need to be that uh, legalistic on everything. Um, people want this to be some some people, and and I and I question why, but some people want this to make this so stringent, so uh, streamlined that that the uh, the you that we're not bringing anything from Earth. Yes, we are. It says it right there that he ate, and it says in and I'll show you the passage where Jesus will actually dress up like a waiter. You're going to be reclined, not just sitting at a table. You're going to be reclined. You're going to be totally relaxed. You're going to be sitting there with all your friends at that table. I'm going to see my grandmother there. I've been, I haven't, I miss her. I haven't seen her since I was a kid. Um, so she's there. And when I get there, she'll be sitting there with me and she'll be young and strong again. And it's not, it's not. I mean, just think about it. it. It's life, but more abundantly. So whatever life, whatever you view here on earth as the best life you could possibly have. Some people want property and and a cottage and horses running around. Some people want a lakefront piece of property looking out over, you know, over the lake. And other people want an oceanfront piece of property. Some people want to live in high rise. Uh, they don't want to deal with the yard and the animals and all that stuff. They just want to live in a high rise. And then when they go out, they just go out and they leave all their, you know, there's no cares to get back to. So everybody will have, and we're not trying to bring heaven there. Remember, God brought heaven here. He created earth perfect. And when we sinned, it fell into disrepair. But portions of earth still here. So whatever you could imagine. And, and I want to say that like I did in my last video. Go ahead and imagine, just imagine, stop and imagine like a child. And Jesus said, be like a child and just imagine the most amazing scenario that exists for you. And then recognize it will pale by comparison as to what it actually is. It's going to be amazing when we get there. So he ate. He did not kill a fish. Well, they did. But when you're in heaven, he will not kill a fish, give you a piece of fish. And he'll just, he just, he'll create it just like he did on the blanket when he lowered it down. And let's see. And here's where it says, blessed are those servants whom the master finds on watch when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. Jesus will put on a waiter's outfit and he will have them recline at the table. You'll be relaxed, totally laid back, relaxed with all your family and friends. There will be no cares of this world, no worry about bills, no stomach aches, shoulder aches, um, back aches, nothing. You'll be in perfect condition in every way. And he himself will come and wait on them. He will come and ask you what you want. And like I said in the last video, I want a steak and potatoes and asparagus, uh, for example. And to the commenter that said, why are you talking? God's not going to kill a cow. He doesn't have to. He's God. He's God. He can make a steak. So know that for sure. And John 6, 44. I have, a, I have that on my wall behind me. And I saw this. I'm like, what is all this? This is something new that's happening. I'm getting these symmetrical uh, times, and I'm just taking pictures of them. Look at that. I don't, I don't even I don't even know what that one means, but it was just strange. Uh, I wanted to show this to you. I've spoke about this many times, but I wanted to show it to you on a graph. Creation starts at Adam. Adam lived in the garden for seven years. In the eighth year, in the second month and the 17th day, being on the timeline... Before the flood, when the beginning of the year was September the 15th, the second month and 17th day would land on what we call today Halloween. Seven days prior to Halloween is when God told Noah to get into the ark, and he did. And what did he do when he got in the ark? He sat at the doorway with the ark door open. Salvation 
was available to anyone who would come to that ark. There is a, a record in the Book of Jubilees that as soon as the ark door shut and it started to rain, that's when they wanted to get in. As soon as the rapture occurs and everyone who thought we were crazy that this event was even going to occur or everyone who's not even watching for this event or thinks all Christians are crazy, they will come running to the door of the ark. They will not be let in. The door will be shut. In the year... So you have Enoch. His son's name was Methuselah. And his son's name was Lamech. And his son's name was Noah. Enoch was born 622 years after creation. He was taken. He is an image or a picture of the bride. He was taken. He was taken to um, heaven when he was 365. That was... 987, I think that's 87, I can barely see it myself, it's so blurry, 987 years after creation. But notice this, it is 669 years before the flood, and I don't know what the 669 means. It has to have some meaning if we're re relating ourselves to Enoch as being the bride and Noah as being, now everybody's like, well, well, we'll we'll look at Elijah. The problem with that is Noah was a picture of the saint that goes through the tribulation. He was protected. Jesus was the ark, and he went through tribulation for one year and ten days. Enoch was taken to heaven 669 years before the flood began. Methuselah died on October the 24th, seven days when God said to Noah, get into the ark. This is also the day that Methuselah died. He died seven days before the flood began. Again, in the book of Jubilee, Methuselah says, do not count me amongst, amongst the wicked, that I should be uh, you know, ashamed. And uh, God took him seven days before the flood, the same day that he told Noah to get into the ark. Lamech his father, Noah's father, died after 777 years in the year 1651 from creation. This is the year that Noah, everybody thinks Noah spent 120 years building the ark. He did not. He spent five years building the ark. He began building the ark when his father, Lamech, died. His father, Lamech, died when he was 777, five years before the flood. He did spend 120 years warning everybody. Word came to Noah that in 120 years, I will flood the earth, build yourself an ark. And he did so. He got the plans. He got all the wood together. He began building five years before the flood began. So it all ties in together. And the only thing that I can't quite wrap my mind around is what does the 669 years from when Enoch went to heaven and the flood when the saints go through tribulation have in relation. There is a relationship, though, I found that I will show you here in a moment. Remember that Noah was on that ark for one year and 10 days. Those 10 days, I believe, was a pole shift. That's why those extra 10 days are in there. There was a shift. Something happened which is why the head of the year, spring, was on September the 15th, but God moved it in Exodus 12 to March the 17th, 182 days earlier. A lot of information I know, but I want to get it to you. Here is what I found. Now, Enoch was born, and I, and, I, and I searched and searched and searched, and the consensus is that Enoch was born on Savon 6. Now, on the Enoch timeline, starting the year on the day of equal parts, on March 17th, when Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in a day? There is only two days in the year where this happens. One of them is back in March, where God said, this now is ahead of your year. And that happens on March the 16th, March the 17th being the first day of the year, which is St. Patrick's Day, every single year. It doesn't change, it doesn't budge, any more than your birthday moves around each year. Your birthday is not like Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day moves its date each year because it wants they want it to land on a Thursday. 
That does not happen with God's timeline. It's solid. Jesus was born on a specific date. And he was conceived on a specific date. And it doesn't move around. It stays solid. So he was conceived on December the 25th. And he was born on September the 29th. Exactly 40 weeks later to the very day. If he was conceived on December 25th, Fifth, you go 40 weeks to the very day, 282 days, which is uh, the perfect amount of time for the. And Jesus will fulfill everything absolutely perfectly. 40 weeks, 40 days, 40 months, 40 years. Everything He does is is perfect in every way. It's not well, you know. Sometimes babies are born this early or that late. No, Jesus would have done it exact. And here we have May 21st, which is Sivan, the sixth. It is the 66th day of the year, and it is, um, well, the sixth day and the 66th day of the year. This is the day that Enoch was born and taken. And ironically, or not so ironically, five months and ten days later, remember that one year and ten days where Noah was on the ark? We have five months and ten days later after that, the flood begins. I've been searching and searching and searching and trying to figure out how long it will take for these seals to open. And I said, maybe it's six days. Maybe it's a few months. And I couldn't lock it down. And I think that this little bit of information will help us lock that down. Is it, thus saith the Lord? No, it's just me surmising that it's a good possibility that this could happen. So, the bride, in relation to Enoch, if Enoch is the bride, he does leave on May 21st. That's when the Bible, and that's consensus. I, I can't prove that through the Bible, but there is uh, greater men than my men and women my, than myself who have researched this that says that uh, he left on Savon 6, which is May 21st. And then I do the math on my timeline here, and I am absolutely floored when I find out it's exactly five months and ten days to the date the flood started on October the 31st, which is Heshbon 17. Five months and ten days. Does that mean at some point between the rapture of the bride and the rapture of the saints, is there some kind of shift that's going to happen, which is going to cause all kinds of turmoil on this planet? Remember, God said he cuts the time short. And then we find two passages where they will be tormented for five months. And that's where I'm at right now. It's almost looking like those six seals. And remember, I'm going to show you again. Um, there, and, and, I, and I don't want to get into the, to an argument over this or, or an in-depth discussion over this because I, I promise you that the bride sees the rapture before the seals. The saints cannot see it. If they could, they'd be a bride. So we don't want to get into a big argument or discussion with a saint and tell them, no, you're wrong, you're wrong, when it turns out that they might be right for their dispensation. Why waste time arguing with a saint and what they understand because they have a job to do and theirs is Huge, because that multitude is coming in in seal six, and it's a great multitude that no man can count. It's huge, and we don't want to slow down their thunder. Let them go. Don't argue with them. There's no point. You're a bride. You were sealed before the foundations of the world. It's done. Um, you were saved, and the evidence is in your what you're doing right now. They are not lost, and that's the thing we were taught for so long there's going to be a rapture, and then everybody else is going to hell. <laughs> God is not going to beat people up for seven years and then throw them into hell. He wants that all recognize who he is, that all come to faith and understanding who Jesus is. Remember in the Bible in the last, and the, at the very end, the Jews will finally, finally drop to their knees and weep over the one that they crucified. They will weep. And why will they do this? They are going to finally, after all this time of the tribulation, how long it is exactly, I don't know. Is Barbara Walter, Walter correct in that it's not seven years? She might be. Is um, Alan over and, and Mike over at... Uh, a ministry revealed and uh, interrupts 165, correct? And that it's 14 years. I don't know. I'm not going to jump on either one of those because I don't know. 
I can get us, I think, ultimately, Amos 3.7 is going to get us to when exactly it's going to happen. And I think there's going to be some sort we know that, that there is this trumpet blast. We know the dead in Christ rise first. There's going to be a catastrophic event that wakes us up. We're awake. We're waiting. None of this stuff is scaring us. We're watching and waiting. But there's going to be this event that takes place that seals the deal that tells us, all right, and I'll be on here. I'll be like, all right, now we know. God just told us it's three days or it's seven days or it's 40 days. I don't know. But in my opinion, well, not my opinion, it's what the Bible says. It's not my uh, words. It's God's words. And he clearly said in Amos 3, 7, I will do nothing, nothing, but I revealeth my secrets to the prophets and the saints before he does it. So is that revealing a trumpet blast? Is that revealing the dead in Christ rising? I don't know. But let's get back into the pictures. Try not to make the video too long. Some of you say, let it go on for three hours because I listen while I work. And others say, dang, you're long-winded. So I never know what to do. But it's amazing that on May 21st to October 31st, the day of the flood, it is five hours and 10 months. Exactly. Let's see what I took pictures of here. Revelation 9, 5. Let's receive a blessing. Every time we read Revelation and we compare Scripture with Scripture and we try to understand what it says, it doesn't say anything about us being perfect and knowing perfect. It says that we will compare Scripture with Scripture and we iron sharpens iron and we will try to get as close as we can. It's an intimacy that we are seeking. We we're seeking truth and intimacy and knowledge, but uh, we're not always 100% accurate. But this is what we're working on. And now, uh, sorry, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. There's that five months. Now that I knew about the five months, but as soon as I noticed that from Shavuot, Savan six. The day Enoch left, the day the Holy Spirit was sent back down to us after Jesus ascended three days earlier, and, Hall and Halloween day, it is exactly five months and ten days. I was floored. I was like, what? i got to get on here and tell everyone. And their power was to hurt men five months. It's a little bit further down in the verse, Revelation 9. So we have this five months that nobody can quite put their finger on. And I don't know if I just did. Or if I'm way off base, but this is another stepping stone in the right direction, I feel. And so that's what we're looking at. Five months. And except those days be shortened. This is where Barbara Weltner gets her information from. Um, Ken Potter has been interviewing her quite a bit lately uh, on Ask a Watch. Is it Watchman of the Word? He changed it. I think it's Watchman of the Word. I, don't, I, don't, I think I have his picture in here. I'll do a shout out. Uh, but he has been interviewing her on the last couple of videos, and she's very knowledgeable. I really like listening to her videos. Um, and except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be saved. Remember, the elect, the bride is a part of the elect. The 144,000 are a part of the elect. We are taken out. Of, we are not taken out of the unsaved we are taken out of the saved. These people, those who go in seal six, are every bit as elect and saved as you are. They are just, I don't want to, they're not doing anything wrong. I don't want to say that. They're doing something wrong. I don't know how to define them as different in any kind of way. But I want you to remember something more importantly than anything. Death means nothing to God. We. Every single person, every single human being that was ever born, conceived, lived one day in the womb, all the way up to living 140 years or however the, the, the longest, I mean Methuselah, 969 years, all the way from zero to 969, every single one of them will be resurrected. They will be brought back and they will be judged. The bride will go to the Bema seat. The saint will go to paradise like the Bible says in, Thess in Thessalonians, and some will be raised to judgment and go to eternal hell fire. Cast down there. That's where 
we're trying to warn people that this is a real thing and that this is going to happen and that's where our focus is. It's not on, well, I'm a bride and you're a saint and you think the seals are already opened or you think that we go mid-tribute. They, they, they've done a new thing now where they're not saying so much that um, that it's going to be at the end of the tribulation, they say, no, it's before the tribulations, but the seals have already been opened. I want to, I want to wake you up to a fact that this is the judgment of God. No human that is the bride that has been covered, just like Barabbas was. Um, he was the bride. Picture the bride, the saint, or the the uh, thief on the cross next to Jesus, who confessed. It states that he went to paradise. Jesus says, it. You're, I will see you in paradise. Paradise is not the third heaven. It's heaven, but it is not the third heaven. But it's heaven. <laughs> it's heaven. It's not hellfire. I mean, that's awesome, right? So the the new thing now is to try to, to, to convince people that the seals are, and this is, again, okay, um, for them, and that's fine. If they want to think the seals are open, if they want to believe that tribulations already began, if they want to believe that this, that just happened is the mark, and they want to tell everybody if you've taken it, you know, it's a bad day for you. Um, they want all of that stuff because that's what they see, and that's not so bad because they're going to be saved. And, and that's what the confusion comes in is people are like, well, I'm, uh, you know, that's, that, that's, they're going in the rapture. It's just a little bit different time. I don't know. Like I said, is it five months later? Is that what that verse indicates? But anyway, let me get back to it. I'll keep talking too much. All right. Days will be shortened. And except, and here we have in Mark 13, 20, and except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And remember, um, we're all elect. The bride's elect. The 144,000 are elect. The dead in Christ are elect. Um, the saints of the tribulation are elect. But there are a select group of people in the Bible discusses this select group of the elect. Luke 21. I want you to notice in this passage, there is no... Did I do something wrong? I did. There is, yeah, there is no discussion of days shortened. <laughs> this is what's driving the bride crazy. We don't understand why we're still here. In Luke, which is, you see up there, Matthew 24 and Mark 13, <clears throat> these are the verses that go with it. Except the days be shortened, except the days be shortened. You'll find that in Matthew 24. You'll find that in Mark 13. You will not find that in Luke because our days are not shortened. We will be brought up to the very last moment possible so that there is no argument or discussion from anyone on either side of the camp, from Satan to uh, the angels to anything, to humans, to nobody, that anybody can argue that God did not completely fulfill the time down here in 22. For these be the days of vege uh, vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. We are waiting, and it feels like an eternity as we wait, but we will wait until the very last second. But for them, for the saints of the tribulation, for the Jew, both of them, there is a discussion about the times being shortened, and I think that shortened here is five months, and I don't know if I just found it right here. Right here, Shavuot. It's in uh, pink up there at the top. This is the day the Holy Spirit descended. They call it a Pentecost. It is a Pentecost because it is 50 days from the date Jesus rises and defeats death. But all of this actually began back here on the triumphant entry. That happened 57 days earlier. There uh, at the bottom line, you can, or in the middle there, on the bottom line, you can see it says 57 days. We know it's 57 days because it starts on a Sunday. And then, I'm sorry, he, like for example, Jesus rose on a Sunday. On the first day of the week, he rose Sunday, right? 50 days later is Shavuot. Then the Bible instructs us to count if it's again. Shavuot is a Sunday. 
Um, and then you count from the Sabbath after. So how many days is it to the Sabbath? You're on Sunday. You have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's seven days. Then you count 50 days. And when you do that, each segment is 57 days. The next Pentecost would land on the 1st of Av, July 16th. It is also a Pentecost. So, Sevan 6, down there at the bottom, the 6th day, which is the 66th day of the year. That's what the circles are. Everything in a circle is how many days it is from the head of the year, being March the 17th. Down here is a formula. Nissan will have 30 days. The years... From what I can study and understand, and people will say it all the time, well, the previous, in the previous time before the flood, there were 360 days. I cannot find that anywhere. Enoch says there are 360 days, but there are four gates that are, that are counted amongst that, bringing it to 364 days. That's what I find. Even though he does say 360, they are forgetting the four gates. And these gates happen in Sivan, Elul, Kislev, and Adar. Those months have 31 days in them. But every event, what I've done is, what I've done is I've used God's calendar as Nisan 1 right there and March 17th being the next day after the day of equal parts, the day that there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. And then I've circled the number next to it. So the first day would be Nisan 1. And you get all these dates out of the Bible. And then all you do is say, well, let's see, if uh, Jesus went to, went to the cross on Nisan 14, and it is the 14th day, and the head of the year is March 17th, you add 14 to that, and what do you come up with? You come up with March 30th. And then you come on down here to Shavuot, and Shavuot is the is Sivan 6. It's always Sivan 6. This I found out also that Enoch was born on this day and he was raptured on this day. It's up at the top there. Five months and ten days later, exactly, it is the flood. Exactly, October the 31st. So the 66th day of the year is Sivan 6. That means we have 30 days of Nisan. We have 30 days of IR, and we are in the sixth day of Sivan. So it's 66 days. If you add 66 days to March 17th, you will land squarely on May 21st. These are very high watch days. I'm going to show you Isaiah 53. He did an incredible study. I've seen this uh, in several places, but he just does so well at putting it together. Um, May 11th, in 1949... Israel was recognized by the United Nations. And, is, and Isaiah 53 does an amazing job of showing that in, on May 11th of 1949. That's when all the trees, which you'll find that in Luke, were present. All the trees were present. That is in two days from now. May the 11th, 1949 until... Now, uh, and then you have three days until Israel, uh, you know, it's 262 days after Israel becomes a nation on May 14th of 1948. Three days prior to that, exactly, three, 262 days after May 14th, 1948, um, three days prior to its one-year anniversary on May the 11th, you will have um, them recognizing the United Nations. Now, there's a bunch of little cool numbers up here on the line. Seven days from when Israel becomes a nation. Sorry. But it was, yeah, Israel becomes a nation, but not in the UN, not recognized by the UN yet. Seven days later is Shavuot. Four days after Israel becomes a nation, Jesus ascends. Three days after Jesus ascends is Shavuot. Three days prior to um, Israel becoming a nation in 1948, one year later is the anniversary of Israel being recognized by the UN. That would be 10 days before Shavuot. So that 10 days comes into play right there as well. But if we count down here, we see that um, 
a Pentecost is also the first day. Is the first day of creation started on September the 11th? Down here at the bottom, I, I've, I have this timeline in my Discord, which I'll put a link to it. Um, you can come in here into my room and look at the timeline and see what you think. Um, but September the 11th is when God began creation. On September the 14th, he created time. On September the 16th, he created man. And on September the 17th, he rested. But you come down over here, and we see that Jesus was born on Tabernacles on September the 29th. Just this last year, we got we received a sign in heaven where um, the moon was turned white as it eclipsed Uranus. It was incredible. It was blood red. And as the perfect timing, as it went over, and we know this has to be a sign. These types of things don't happen by accident. Forty days exactly. And, and I saw that and I could not relate. What was I'm like, what's November the 8th? What does November the 8th mean? Because that's when it happened. It happened on November the 8th. It, it was the blood moon turned white uh, exactly as it crossed over Eclipse Uranus. What? What does that mean, you know? And then I found it. In the Bible, it speaks of when a woman has a male child, which she did on September the 29th. She is unclean and made clean 40 days later. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. The blood moon was made clean 40 days later. And guess what? It's one day before the Pentecost. I'm sorry, it's what happens one day right after the Pentecost. So, again, you could argue at sunset. And you come down here anyway. Let me go back here. Right down here, Heshvan 17 is October the 31st. It is the 229th day of the year. It is exactly five months and 10 days and 669 years after Enoch was taken. 669 years, 5 months, and 10 days. I know, I believe, I know what the 5 months and 10 days is. I don't know exactly what the 669 years is. Yep, that happened. Um, May 17th. I don't know why I have this on here. Oh, uh, notice the something, let me think here. What was it? I believe the moon eclipses Jupiter is what it was. I saw this on one of the YouTube channels and I don't recall which one, but the moon, or maybe it was uh, Spinebreaker that uh, Kevin that, that noticed this. I don't recall who did, but the moon is about to eclipse Jupiter. Remember when the moon eclipsed uh, Uranus, it was a blood moon turned white. So the moon is very important as to telling us uh, uh, things to watch for. So the moon's about to eclipse Jupiter on Maybe this was, I think this was Bob Barber on End Time Dreams and Visions, actually, that, that came out with this. But anyway, on 5.17, at 5.17 a.m., the moon begins to eclipse Jupiter. It's, it's like a perfect um, uh, thing to be pointing at uh, at that time. And then we know on May 18th, Jesus ascends. So, oh, here's the promise from God. And remember, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff. Everybody's going to, we're all going to be on here making videos trying to figure this out. But at the end of the day, God, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants and prophets. These secrets, are, when is the rapture? When is the bride going? When are the saints going? How long after the bride goes do the saints go? How long after the resurrection of the dead? Do, does the bride go? Is there multiple resurrections of the dead? I mean, you have dead people that, that were watching. You have dead people that didn't believe that uh, they could ever know when he was coming back and not watching at all. Um, how many different scenarios are there where there is the dead in Christ and the alive in Christ that rise together? How many different times has that happened? So he will tell. At the end of the day, God will tell us. That's why there's, we shouldn't be stressed over it because finally we will know. But he's going to tell us exactly when. But until then, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent, which means to turn to Jesus. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I will come upon thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. What does it mean? Does it mean go outside and stare up at the sky? Does it mean 
Well, I'm watching every day. I'm I'm not I'm not I don't believe you can know. That's the wrong attitude according to this verse. According to this verse, you will be watching, you will be trying to figure it out, you will be studying and putting like me, I do a timeline which is one year long. There are people who put timelines together that are six thousand years long. There are people who uh, can read the uh, Stellarium. I don't even, I, I can't even hold a candle to them how good they are. There's people that go around and have, there's people who receive actual words and dreams and visions from God. I don't get that uh, for me. People who see numbers and tags, I could, can, I could go on and on over how God is speaking to each one of us and in our own way. There are people who drive down the street just keep looking at tags because those tags tell them things. I don't. I don't see anything on tags. But there's people who go out and say, I saw a tag, three different tags with a 777 on it. What are the odds? I would never see that. God would not send that type of thing to me because I simply wouldn't see it. Now, here lately, I've been seeing the time as in relation to... Um, Symmetrics and I and I don't know why, but it's popping up quite often. I'll open my phone, I'll be like, "Wow, you know, that's crazy that that number's there." And what's amazing about that most often is that I will snap a screenshot, and that time, not just sometimes, every single time that I snap a screenshot, that time will be there. It's almost like God alerts me to open my phone at this time. I see a number, and I t and at first, nine times out of time, I shut it off and put it in my back pocket. I'm like, 444, 644, 911, 1111, 222. These numbers pop up, and I'm like, hold on a second. Let me pull my phone back out. Let me turn it on. And let me take a screenshot of that screen, which is what comes up when I turn on my phone. And inevitably, all the time, not some of the time, I never go, ah, I just missed it. Darn it. That never happens. Every single time, I have time to turn my phone up, put it in my back pocket, walk, think for a moment, not over a minute, of course, but think for a second and go, that's weird that that time popped up and pull my phone back out, turn it on and take a screenshot. And that time is there. It's always there. So that's something new that's happening to me. And uh, I count it as a blessing, right? I count it as a blessing. Not everybody is going to figure out how to do a timeline. Not everybody um, like uh, Ikra Symphony, uh, she's an engineer. She can literally see things that I can't even see on my own timeline. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even, uh, half the time I'm like, what? But she, that's the gift that she has. And remember, we all have gifts. I have a gift. You have a gift. We all have a gift in one way or another. Um, Gina runs the newsroom on Discord. Uh, she actually runs Discord. I really, I pop in there, but she actually runs it. And there's a lot of other wonderful moderators. Sue's in there. Um, Sandy's in there. There's a lot of other wonderful moderators that, and it's all very peaceful in there. It's very nice. And everybody's sharing information and we're all trying to work together. And we know that some people just can't see this stuff and don't get mad at them because it's just a different dispensation. But all right, let me keep going. Get too long-winded here. Whoops. All right. So did we read that? Yes. Amos, uh, Revelation 3.3. 3. That defines us. This defines us. We are watching. What about uh, my aunt who doesn't believe the rapture will happen for 100 years? She is saved. She is going to heaven. She's not going through the bad part of tribulation. She is going to be woke up. And I don't want to say your aunt because you might have a very wonderful aunt. I'm t talking about the rich man that showed up at Jesus. He says, oh, I got everything. I got it all figured out. I've been good since I was a kid. I've obeyed the law. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. That type of security, that type of security is a false sense of security. Me, all I have, and this is what every single one who is in the bride will tell you, all we have is Jesus. That's all we have. I don't have this YouTube channel. I, like Watchman River says, I am not, what does he say exactly? I am not a preacher. I'm not a prophet. I'm not even a good teacher, <laughs> you know, but he's right. We aren't. But amazingly, people who have spent their entire lives in the Bible and studying prophecy and all that stuff, and we watch their videos, we have somehow, and I don't know how, come up with 
more insight. Not that we're better than them by any means, not even a little bit. They were so they were leaps and bounds more than us. But these connections that are being put together are being put together to now, uh, right now, for us to see, right now. And so, again, we will inevitably say, I, I don't know why Jesus chose me. I have no idea. I know that without Him, I'm not going. I know that I'm not chosen. Why do I watch? I don't know. I can't stop. It's just the craziest thing. It's inside of me, and I just I cannot stop. Oh, that messed everything up. I think I'm back. Okay. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's still working. Watchman River. Um, will uh, I lost my train of thought there. He sees like in the news and stuff. You know, he sees all the news that's going on and stuff. So it's all. Um, it's all pretty. Uh, um, it, it, it's all pretty. Um, geared toward each towards each individual and how they perceive things around them but they're still watching right but he'll tell you i don't i didn't do anything special none of us did uh, but we each have our our lot we each all, all have our gifts and keep using them to your fullest potential that you can let me see something here i hope i'm still on i hope i didn't lose voice over that last message I'm going to, if I lost voice, then I'm going to uh, continue on in a second video right now.